Welcome soldiers, welcome students, welcome student soldiers to our final week together in English 1A, Composition and Reading, English Composition and Reading. Um, I'm going to try to release a few short uh, videos uh, to complement the slides that I've recently attached to the announcements. Uh, that are an attempt to summarize uh, what we've done this semester. Uh, those of you able to come into the classroom this week, uh, that will be tomorrow and Wednesday, uh, we'll be able to go over this and uh, have Q&A in class and all that. And of course have a final exam on Wednesday. It's all happening so fast, right? Uh, <clears throat> I am uh, trying to structure the final exam so it can be completed in class or out of class. And... Um, <clears throat> There will be some <coughs> requirements that are strict. For example, the online component of the grading, anything that is submitted via Canvas, will probably have a hard deadline of the 15th. I'm guessing at midnight, you know, that night, you know, at uh, so 23.59. But uh, anything to do with your writing uh, <coughs> uh, stuff that you can kind of informally get back and forth to me on, uh, before the 19th uh, should be reasonable. So uh, we, I foresee some flexibility in, in uh, assessing your final grades. So not to worry if, if your schedules are getting uh, very, very busy right now. Of course they are. So <coughs> let's uh, <coughs> um, try to uh, just kind of give you an overview of the, uh, the slides you're going to see. Try to give you an overview without getting into the detail as we would classroom and uh, if I can spot any details that are missing I can of course fill them in by talking with you right now I would suggest printing them out bringing them as handouts or just taking them as handouts with you out in the field all right <coughs> so without further ado okay so <coughs> Uh, back in week one, um, we talked about the catalog description of this course, right? Uh, kind of an important thing because the catalog is sort of the marketing, our marketing to you guys. And our marketing to you guys was that English composition and reading offers instruction in expository and argumentative writing, appropriate and effective use of language, close reading, cogent thinking, research strategies, information literacy, and documentation. So that sounds like a lot. And in fact, uh, as you'll soon, you know, you'll see in the next slide there, uh, it's actually seven different learning areas kind of uh, spelled out for us there in the, the course description. Those areas being writing, diction, cogent thinking, close reading, research strategies, documentation, and information literacy. However, it's not necessary to provide equal weighting to all of those skills areas in, in a composition course, and in fact, it would be nonsense. The, really, the, the, the pinnacle of, of, of this is your ability to read, analyze, and respond to college level articles and essays okay so we've 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 jumped into an article very early in our semester a research article and we we were able to read and analyze that we did not respond to that <laughs> all right so uh that evolved into our expository essays right so the first intended learning outcome is to read analyze and respond to college level articles or essays. So we responded verbally in both speaking and writing activities in class. We've also uh, focused on the second intended learning outcome of this course, which is to incorporate research into essays. Incorporate research into essays. Okay, so you guys are finding sources, incorporating research into essays using the Modern Language Association documentation style. That's the MLA style. Now, I perhaps I have not been clear enough, and I want to make it clear here, that the 
MLA style is what's required, and that's all that's really going to be measured here. I do want you to be able to read documents in the APA formatting style because a good majority of the research you find is going to be in APA um, documentation. So you need to understand when, you know, in which situations we use the author date referencing in, of the APA, in which situations the author title referencing of the MLA is more appropriate. Um, however, you do not need to compose <laughs> in using the APA. So, um, don't want you to have to sweat out the details on that. I think recognition is good enough uh, for, for this task. So we really have two, two to simplify it, we have two learning outcomes, um, but with the seven different kind of skills areas that, that are encompassed in those two learning outcomes. All right. Um, so we started off uh, early, very early, talking about the modes of composition, how we mix them up. And um, this is just natural. It's the way humans communicate, uh, whether we're speaking or writing. We are mixing uh, modes of communication. And so uh, it's very easy to conflate the modes of communication with the various genres of writing, including essays, including articles, uh, you know, the target of, of our, you know, our course syllabus, what we want you to, to, to understand, to be able to read and analyze, right? But uh, <laughs> there are other genres too, such as, you know, um, you know, short stories and novels, there's, you know, prose. So, uh, prose is something that you'll be getting into should you take English 1C uh, later on. So, within a particular genre, you will find mixed modes of communication also. Right? Very early on, I, I tried to show you within that, that research article, um, help you notice that there's, say, some narrative in the description of the research methods, the process they used, the steps they took, right? Um, that would also encompass a process uh, description, right? An expo exposition of process also. Uh, in the introduction to the research, uh, we, uh, the description of, of that situation, right? Um, of the uh, athletes. I think they were the uh, Muslim athletes and the Christian athletes, you know, and then they're presenting the situation. Could we get these people to get along in this war-torn area? Then the um, ex expository, uh, we, we find, you know, in the classifications, right? In, in tr uh, Every time you try to present a table and classify uh, people or objects or anything, so we're getting in some classifications. When we deal with instructions, we're you know dealing with uh, processes. Um, anytime we're dealing with persuasion, we are we are dealing with argument, and uh, in the case of uh, the academic world <laughs> that you're entering. Um, argument is expected to, to use more of the logical. Uh, <coughs> You know, means of appeal as opposed to say the ethos or the pathos which we talked about uh, ad infinitum in this class. So um, part of my approach to composition is to help you recognize that you're mixing up modes of composition in your writing and uh, perhaps to notice that in your reading also. So uh, <coughs> Um, also helping you connect these these modes of communication with uh, modes of thinking, right? Um, we, well, we talked one day in the classroom when we were comparing modes of reasoning to modes of communication, right? Modes of composition. Telling stories. That's narration, right? Uh, when we polarize two things, right? We are contrasting, right? When we kind of put things together and say, hey, these two, these two guys are great, we are comparing them, putting them in the same category. So, right, extensions of classification, right? So, anything we're writing about is really an extension of our thinking. 
Um, we talked, uh, well, I gave you a, kind of a brief introduction to toll mean logic, which uh, I hope you will look up uh, and, and get some of these basics here. Uh, the, the basic is the simplified version where you have data, or you know, which is your evidence, and you're using it to support a claim, which is your conclusion. And it's not enough to simply throw some data and say, because of this, this is true. <laughs> you have to say, because of this and my thinking, right? You're going to tie it all together. This is true. So that's called warranting. You have to warrant that claim, you know, the data, the, the evidence you're pro uh, providing. So it's a three-point, uh, kind of a more of a modern way of being logical. Now, <laughs> I would add that you could actually add any type of appeal on top of the toll mean uh, approach, right? You, you know, you, the, for example, the warrant could be a, a, an ethical appeal. It could be a pathetic appeal, right? It could be something like that if it, if it is effective in tying the, the uh, data to the claim, although that is not logical, right? <laughs> so uh, we have to keep in mind these situations where we write. So when we're writing in academic world, academia, college, right? Uh, try to focus more on the logical appeals. So we did talk about the tool mean logic a bit. And we uh, definitely, definitely talked about your thesis and your thesis statement, right? The idea that a statement is a sentence, a thesis is a sentence, a thesis is your main point. Right, and a statement tells you something about that main point, right? And readers of essays, particularly readers of essays, expect a thesis statement to be embedded within that first paragraph. And if it's not, it's going to drive your readers bonkers because they'll be confused, right? So you could do it one of two ways. You could combine into a single sentence, or you can um, maybe split into two sentences. I would do more than that. Keep it simple, but keep them in that introductory paragraph, All right? And see what else? Yeah, we talked about the writing situation. I'll see that was mid week four, right? Um, think of it as a square, right? Really, <laughs> there's four things going on, right? There's the audience. Who's your audience? Right? Um, your persona. Who are you, right? Um, purpose. What is your purpose in, in writing to that audience? And what is the actual message that you're, you're giving to that audience? So all four are, are intertwined. Okay, so like, uh, for example, your persona uh, in your field, you, you can probably relate to this quite clearly. You know, you, you're, there are certain um, ways of, of talking with the public when you're in uniform versus, say, when you're in your casual clothes out on a weekend, right? So your persona can, can affect your, your modes of communication, you know, situationally, right? So who is your, you know, who are you? Uh, your audience, is your audience Mr. Parker, your professor, right? Um, I'm going to encourage you not to make me your audience, uh, to imagine a perhaps broader audience, an audience that you might actually like to reach with your ideas. Um, and I'm simply just kind of an observer looking in, trying to help you cobble this together, its composition, right? So um, try not to you know, sweat your GPA and think of me as your audience, but think of whomever as your audience is important in constructing the message and, and perhaps in the, the purpose of that message. Right? So your writing is, writing is situational. As is everything in life, right? Uh, let's see. 
we did talk about uh, grammar and just uh, let you know this is not a grammar course this is a composition course English composition so it presupposes uh, you know English you know some things about grammar that being said you're likely to make some grammatical mistakes and some of these mistakes will cause confusion for your reader <laughs> to, to, to make assessment efficient I'm really um, I'm looking at those things that make confusion for your reader, right? So one of those is, is what we call the comma splices. Look that up. You can find all kinds of stuff about comma splices online. Um, um, and the details of reported speech. Okay? Now, you got to look this up in your MLA documentation because it's part of MLA documentation that is to do with the referencing which is actually putting your what they said in quotes or uh, sometimes just deciding whether to put it in quotes or simply paraphrase it but either way you have to cite it and reference it so you're going to get into some documentation some stylistics there all right so uh you know look into a sentence combining i will upload some sentence combining uh materials note to self so it's combining we had a few in class uh, most of them were okay one of them was kind of a dud so I'll put most of them except the one online here and uh, you know, get used to the fanboys you know the conjunctions for for um, those uh, coordinating conjunctions and also some of the phrases for subordinating conjunctions so um, that you know you can start you know combining sentences, embedding, transforming, and so forth. Um, let's see. We talked quite a bit about structure, didn't we? Structure is key. So We looked, for example, at the standard five-paragraph essay. That is a structure uh, that you were probably exposed to in, in you know, high school or earlier than that, possibly. But it's simply introduction, three-body paragraphs, and a conclusion, each one being a single paragraph. Um, This was probably really good practice, I think, because there's there's a lot um, within that type of structure that, that that still is is applicable to more expanded structures. You know, the introduction and conclusion, for example. I think you may recall the day when I I drew the hamburger <laughs> through the body paragraphs in the middle, um, <laughs> but you need those two pieces of bread to kind of hold it together. And I don't know. So yeah, you need a conclusion that has uh, um, elements of a summary and uh, a reminder of the outline of the entire paper there, right? So like if a professor just reads that concluding paragraph, they should be able to outline your paper in, in, your, in their head. Seriously, so that's something to think about. Um, it's just helping people understand your thinking by re your repeating patterns, right? Think of it as, as a form of parallelism, right? We talked about that once also, parallelism. So um, we talked also about things that you need to read and understand, and this was where it could get confusing. This is where I say learning the APA referencing is really more helpful for you at this point as a reader and as a researcher, because you're going to be looking at these lists of references and you need to understand there's a difference in the pattern and a purposeful difference in the pattern um, from the MLA pattern. Okay, So, uh, but most research articles will follow the APA standard for research paper, which is kind of, it's nicknamed the IMRAD, I-M-R-D, right? Introduction, Methods, Research, um, results, discussion, and conclusion. I M R D, right? Introduction, methods, results, discussion, and then conclusion. So the the conclusion is something I kind of added there, uh, because the discussion kind of merges to a conclusion. But the most essential thing is the introduction, methods, results, and discussion. So. 
The point is to understand how to read a research paper. I do not want you to, to go to write a full-blown research paper. Because <laughs> um, that is not at the point of this course, right? Remember, it's to help you read, analyze, and understand an article, which we are, a research article. You're understanding the research structure and, and to write essays. So um, I think that's enough. Um, anyway, um, I do expect you to find a couple of sources and, you know, practice writing them in the MLA style. So, um, expository and argumentative uh, essays are basically the, the, the two, two, two types I'm hoping to give you so, some good foundation in, and uh, hopefully you can continue developing strength in those. Um, the argumentative, I'm trying to help you understand that the difference in expectations, uh, say, between the, the modern world, you know, the say, the academic, very logos-centric world, and, you know, the, in the classical world, ethos, logos, and pathos, you know, anything goes, but also help you recognize that even in modern, you know, civil society, right, the... Uh, classical appeal still apply. It's, you know, there's, it's gloves off, right, as far as uh, persuasion goes. So this is going to be very helpful in your reading comprehension, and particularly in developing your critical thinking and ability to analyze the, these texts that you find that are trying to persuade you. Uh, so, um, so there's expected structures, such as the IMRAD structure, right? There's also expected documentation styles, Right, uh, and little minutia that are so important. For example, at the end of an APA listing, it will say references, and then a list. At the end of an essay that is using the MLA format, it will say works cited. Right, so those those are very important. These details. So composition, you will eventually get down to details. Right, and uh, the devil is in the details, as they say. Right, uh, we we had some we reviewed some brainwash, uh, not brainwashing. I'm sorry, brainstorming uh, strategies. Right, uh, one of them that I find effective is called the KWL method. Just what do I know already? Uh, w, what do I want to know? L, how can I learn more about it, right? So this KWL, know, want to know, learn more, can kind of help you as you research, help and help you frame, you know, as, as you are composing a paper, it helps you stay in scope, right? Use your KWLs to stay in scope, right? Um, some things that can help you kind of get, get you know, your, your brain lubricated. One of the most free writing. Remember, you can write for, say, 10, 15 minutes on an issue. Um, and then stop, pause, read what you wrote, and then write a single sentence called the center of gravity. Try to sum up the gist of your very recent thinking. Um, and then, you know, later on when you're sitting at your desk, you, you'll find that that can help inform the structure of, of the, the major compositions that you're working on now, which I'm assuming you're working on now, right? Um, and different professors have different writing processes, but I think all would concur that a writing process is important. Uh, I would encourage you to uh, cultivate a writing process that does involve intermediate drafts and purposeful intermediate drafts. There's no rule as to how many intermediate drafts, um, um, but at some point you're going to do a final draft where you're just, you want to polish every little thing, every little thing. It's like you're getting ready for inspection, guys, seriously, so polish every little sentence. Okay. Um, English composition, okay, what did we study? Okay, so yeah, we're going kind of want to wrap this up. We're getting almost to a half hour, which I think is kind of near the, the typical attention span here for, you know, a sit-down lecture like this where we can't break up with questions and so forth. So just recall that our learning outcomes are just twofold. One, read, analyze, and respond to college-level articles or essays. And two, 
incorporate research into the essays using into the essays we write using the MLA documentation style. So keep it simple. K I S S. You know that one's right. Um, I did add up to 100 here. Okay, 30% is your expository essay, 40% is your argumentative essay, 10% is participation, 20% is your final exam. And for participation, I am monitoring the emails and you know private communications coming back and forth, as well as the Canvas uh, traffic. And um, uh, it's midnight, so I better I better knock it off and try to get a good night's sleep and come in and see you all tomorrow. So have a good night, ladies and gentlemen.